Hello and welcome to part two of Lino Cut Fish. In part one um, I talked about drawing on the block and preparing a design for Lino Cut. In this part I'm going to carve the block and then part three will be printing. So um going to use, this is the design I've already started and I'll show you the tools I'm going to use going to do a longer video about tools separately but for the purposes of this video I'm going to use a what I call a medium U gouge which is a three millimeter gouge uh, and what I call a large U gouge which is five millimeters and a large V gouge. Um, the other tool I use a lot is the small U, one millimeter U gouge um, but I'm probably not going to use that for this project. So these two tools are made by File which is a Swiss company. These are the tools I recommend to all my students. Um, they are they're not cheap but they will last you a lifetime if you look after them and learn how to sharpen them. The they do do a large V tool, but I prefer this one, which is just a cheap large V. So check out my other video when I've finished it about tools and where you can get them and exactly which ones to get. But anyway, that's what I'm going to use for this project tonight. I've also got under here, this is a, a non-slip mat, which I just got from the pound shop and it just helps the block stay in position as you're carving uh, and it means you don't have to, to grip the block quite so hard with your other hand so it's a bit easier. Now before I start I'm going to um, colour the surface of the block pale blue using a alcohol based marker. Um, so I'll do that now. So I've coloured in the surface just to make it a little bit easier for you to see what I'm doing in this video. Um, I sometimes do this anyway when I'm working, just makes it a little bit easier to see the bits that you've removed. The lino I'm using is traditional linoleum, it's the grey one. And again I'll do another separate video about why I like this lino and what other alternatives there are but for this I'm going to crack on with the carving now um, a lot of people when they're starting out make the mistake of starting by going around the outline the problem with that is if you've got anything in the background that, that butts up with that line then you've immediately carved a white line around your outline so prefer not to start with that I think I'm going to start with the eyes um, I sometimes say if you start with the most difficult part or the most crucial part and you mess it up then you can start again you haven't wasted a whole load of time carving it but um, there is another argument that it's better to warm up on a, a non-crucial area and once you've warmed up and then you can do the tricky bits or the important bits. Um, now if I'm carving curves I take the block off the non-slip mat so I'm going to do that for the eyes and I'm going to use the um, three millimeter medium gouge and um, these days I I try to use the largest tool I can and I try to remove for instance this area that I'm going to remove here 
try and do it in one go so I could just go around it once rather than going around the outside and the inside and then clearing the middle. I find if you if you can manage to do it in one go you get uh, as long as you don't mess it up you get a nice clean result when you come to print it so I'm gonna be brave for this video and start with this eye here so um, I'm really leaning into the line out with my right hand which is my cutting hand and then just sort of pushing the block onto the tool with my left hand and I managed to do that without messing it up. Um, let's do the other eye. Now with this one, I quite like the fact that it's not an even width all the way around, so I'm going to go a little bit deeper here. The deeper you cut, as a rule of thumb, the wider the line you get. I'll do another video about mark making with the tools which is something I do again with my students but um, that's the outlines now for the little dots in the middle the highlights of the eyes I'm going to stick the tool in this is again the three millimeter U gouge and just spin the block and you get a, a little white dot and I hope it's obvious, but the bits that I carve away are going to be the white areas. This is just going to be a black and white print in the end. Um, so now I think I'm going to go around the outside of the eyes. Uh, I talked a bit in the first video about um, editing the image as I carve it. So. I will make little adjustments and I might grab my pen and even make some adjustments to the drawing as I go um, and some of that will be just sort of tidying things up or I might add or remove things if in doubt it's always worth leaving things in and um, you can always remove them later, you can't put stuff back that you've removed. So if in doubt, leave it in. And then you can do a quick print, see how it looks and decide whether you want to leave it in or not. Okay. Now here I've got my outline of my fish doesn't join up with the eye and it doesn't join up here but I'm going to leave that so as it is so I'm actually going to carve around this um, this lino the traditional grey lino does dry out over time so um, try and get fresh lino if you can if it is a bit old what tends to happen is it just it, goes a bit brittle and it, it's a bit harder to cut um, so you you can warm it up I usually sit on it or you can put it in the on a radiator or in the sunshine now I've carved this edge a little bit wider than the actual eye so I'm gonna go just go back and shave a bit off there so I'm sort of rotating the block on this finger here um, I know fish don't have noses, but I've given it a little pair of nostrils there, just for fun. Now I think I would usually spend an hour or two on something like this, but I'm going to speedy carve it, because I don't think you'll want to sit through an hour watching this, you must, some of you might but I'll, um, I'll try and do it quickly, sometimes it's quite a nice exercise to do it quickly because um, it sort of forces you to simplify things, I think that's 
again that's one of my mantras is simplify things because it's very easy to get bogged down in the detail and you end up making it a little bit fiddly and overcomplicated. Now these bits so here I've cut here I don't know if you can see that but there's an edge there which um, is going to print as a sort of echo line there. I quite like that so I'm going to leave that in. I, a lot of my animals I give a slightly um, like that tired look with the baggy eyes so all the bags under the eyes and there's another little bit here a tiny little rec triangle there which is left behind so I'm going to leave that as well because I quite like it and like like I said I can always take that out later now anytime you've got a, a white dot it's very easy to or quick to carve you just take it out but with a black dot you've got to go around it so bear that in mind when you're planning your image if you draw lots of dots and lines in black and you want them black in your print you've got to go around each one so I try and have a balance of positive and negative so that I've got um, some areas where I'm going around a dot like this and some areas where I'm digging bits out and then other areas where it's more shapes um, One of the nice things about traditional lino is that it's quite crumbly and brittle so you can, any little bits that are just still attached, you just brush them away with your finger. If you've ever tried um, using any of the vinyl alternatives, sometimes they're sold as lino but they're vinyl, they're sort of rubbery material. Um, you can't do that, you can't break off the little piece so it gets a bit tedious trying to remove them. Now I'm going to switch to my big uh, U-gouge to take out a larger chunk there and there. The more you use the big tools cleaner print you're going to get because you don't get these ridges, the smaller tools tend to leave these ridges and then they print as a, as a line. It might be something you like, it might be something you try and avoid. You can always go back and, and clean up the block afterwards if you need to. Um, okay, I'm going to stop talking now and speedy carve around all these little dots. Now, up here, um, we've, his fish has already got eyebrows, which again, fish don't have eyebrows, but um, a lot of my animals have slightly human characteristics. Um, we've got a, an echo of those up here, which is purely by chance those dots are in a line. So instead of carving around each dot, I'm going to carve two parallel lines. I've already carved one side, I'm just going to carve this side. And then with the big U-gouge I'm just going to take out those chunks. So we get a more or less dotted line made up of little rectangles there. And these larger 
dots. I haven't decided yet whether I'm going to do them as I've drawn them or make them a bit more solid. So I'm going to leave those for now. Um, I think with the background I'm going to have a, a more or less clear area around the fish and just some more tree textures, just very subtle things here. This, these chunks were just taken out to show somebody what I think I was demonstrating something in a workshop so just ignore those. Anyway I think this little fin here I'm going to bring that down so that it just sticks out just to break up that line a bit. Um, Start changing things now. Try not to do too much of that. Um, I think that looks better. So now I'm going to go around the outline from here and to here. I won't do the mouth yet because I haven't decided what to do with the teeth. Um, I'm going to go around the outline with the um, the medium U. That that's a really good tool for following an edge, as is the small U. Let's do this a little bit first. So if you come up to a right angle corner, you can just stop and break that little bit off. Um, these file tools, in particular, the U gouges have um, the number eleven U gouges have very steep sides, so that great for following an edge accurately. Um, now here instead of coming in at a sharp angle I'm going to come out from here I'm trying not to cut towards my fingers, that's one of the first things I tell people in my workshops is cut away from your hand in case you do slip. I do still slip sometimes, so I still try and cut away from my hand, although I do feel fairly in control of what I'm doing. I've been doing this longer than I would like to say so. Um, you've got nice sharp tools. I'm going to slip now. I said that. If you've got nice sharp tools, uh, it does make it easier not to slip. Um, so again, here I'm going to go out from the corner to do that little fin and then we'll just whiz around here up to the lips. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna clear this area here, I'm gonna switch to a large U gouge to do that. Now if you're removing bigger chunks like that, um, it's a bit more resistant, you have to push a bit harder, so I'm going to grab my non-slip mat and, and do it like that. If you're clearing an area, it's worth thinking about the direction that you're carving, so if you do get any little lines that, that print, um, you can decide to keep them in or not. So have a think about the direction you're carving in terms of it making sense when if those bits do print. Um, my watery texture is all going to be um, going across. So I'm going to carve this section going across like this. Now I'm slowing right down towards the end there so that I don't slip. I do have a bigger tool that I use for clearing 
larger areas. This is only an A6 block. Um, I think it's six by four inches, so this tool's perfectly big enough. This large U, but I'd have a one that I call the big scoop. Um, it's almost like a shovel. You can remove areas quite quickly. So I'm carving down um, probably about a third the thickness of the block. So I think the block is uh, 3.2 millimetres, so I'm probably going about a millimetre to a millimetre and a half deep there. You obviously, if you go very deep, you hit the, the hessian on the back. That's how you know you're going too deep. Um, uh, the tail here, again, I'm going to carve outwards away from the tail. You'll find when you get to the edge, if you're carving over the edge like that, it does tend to break, especially if it's a bit older than I know. And beware of all these little bits. Um, that you've removed, try and keep them away from the block because if they go underneath the block it raises it up and you get a little bump and then when you carve over that area it's harder, it's much harder to carve uh, if you're not carving a flat surface. Okay, so I'm suspecting some of these little bits will come out but I'm going to leave those um, the sort of suggestion of movements. I try to avoid my prints being too cartoony. Um, I don't think there's anything wrong with cartoons. I'm a big fan of Tintin and people like Chris Ware and Schultz and all those guys. But um, if my, if my prints end up looking like a cartoon, I'm not happy with it usually, so it's got to be somewhere between Albrecht Dura and the Beano. Then I'm happy. That's the sort of what I'm aiming for. So for this wiggly line, I'm just going to rotate my wrist as I go. Take out that little piece there, and while I'm in the swing of it, do a little wiggle there, and a little wiggle there. Now my little wiggles aren't exactly what I've drawn, but it doesn't matter. Um, so I'm going to clear a bit more around here, and then I'll do some more tree textures. Now up here, I haven't done the outline yet for this. This is an angler fish, I think. I don't know what you call that bit, the rod maybe. So um, one thing to make sure you do is rather than clearing clearing the background first, do, do the outline first because once you've cleared the background, when you do the outline, if you meet a, a bit that you've removed, the tool tends to want to shoot off in that direction. So it's always easier to carve um, into uh, uncut lino. So in this case here, I'm going to cut the middle first because if that deviates from the line that I've drawn, I can then match the outline to it. Um, 
Actually, I'm going to use the little one millimeter tool for this. I'm going to take it off the non-slip mat uh, because I do want this quite narrow this line. The one millimeter tool is a big hit usually with my students because it's maybe the easiest tool to carve with because you're not removing a lot of liner so it's, it's almost like drawing it's, it's not really effort, much effort at all and you get a nice controlled line there so you can see now this outline here is slightly thinner than the inside outline so when I go around the edge which I'll do with the medium one again I'm gonna leave a bit more room on the outside again slowing right down into the corner And if this bit sometimes blocks your view of what you're doing, you can just break it off. Now I've got uh, an edge cut there. When you meet that edge, you should get a nice, clean right angle. Um, now because I haven't carved to the black, this doesn't look... It's not very really clear how that's going to print. Sometimes I take a Sharpie and colour that in. Um, but what can happen is the sharpie bleeds outwards from the line and starts to colour in the bit that you have removed and it doesn't necessarily help you see exactly what's going on so I'm not going to bother this time just clear this bit here um, So now I'm just going to finish this little bit here because it's in the corner I'm sort of arching my fingers to make sure I carve towards the gap between my fingers. Again there's these little echo lines that I'm not sure whether they're going to stay or not but I'll leave them in for now. And that's rounded there so I want to keep that rounded so I'm going around that bit here and I'll take this bit out in one go with the large view. There we go, very satisfying that. Okay. So let's finish the background. I'm going to remove a bit more here. Sometimes it's nice to, well, you can decide whether you want to define the edge of the block. So when you print it, you can see where the edge of the block is. Other times, I, I prefer to have a, a random shape on a free, free floating white background. So I don't want the edges to show at all. And in that case, sometimes I even take a pair of scissors after I've carved the block and trim it so that I know nothing's going to print, say, in that area. Cut it off with a pair of scissors. Um, in this case, I'm going to carve it just a little bit deeper right around the edge to make sure it doesn't print. Now, going to have a little bit of watery texture here, I'll just take out these existing marks because they're the wrong shape. And the way I'm going to do the water here is, um, ignore those black lines, is just by doing little shapes like this. Sort of long oval shapes and building up a texture that way. And it's basically, it's the bits that get left behind that are going to print. And you get these nice shapes that sort of give the impression of water. 
um, a lot of what the liner cut for me is about is is trying to create the effect of something or the illusion of something using simple shapes and marks so I try and exploit the tools and use the marks that, that they make to my advantage rather than trying to force them to do something more difficult I don't know if that makes sense but um, rather than drawing A drawing and then tracing around it. I try and use the tools as a creative tool, as a, a drawing tool. Um, so I think it gives that a uh, more interesting result. You get um, lots of different textures and marks. And I'll do another vi uh, another video, as I said, about mark making with the different tools. It's quite a nice exercise just to do a test block. This is what I do with my students. When we're starting a workshop, we just do a test block and use all the different tools. I'm going to get my non-slip map back. Um, we use all the different tools to see what marks they can make. So I'm carve make, trying to make sure I carve these all exactly horizontally, even though I'm carving the block from different directions. It's wobbling the table a bit, so I hope it's not making the film too wobbly. Right, so I would say I've removed um, 95 or more percent of the block in these areas. I just left a few little marks, little print, um, and quite often I'll I'll do a print and I'll go back and remove more of those pieces um, you can never know exactly how it's going to print until you do it but you get a fairly good idea and colouring in the block does help because you can see the blue areas are the, are the ones that are going to print quite therapeutic this when you're clearing a large area like this you don't have to think too hard so that's the enjoyable part of the carving when you're carving um, the important parts that's when it can get a bit stressful so I feel like I've warmed up a little bit now um, I'm going to reattach these teeth. I'm going to take a um, pen and just do that so I don't forget to do that. And while those are bits are drying, I will go around this little fish. Now I'm going to do this. I know I said I wasn't going to use the little tool, but I'll use it for this one because I just want a little eye on this one. So if you want a smaller dot, you just use a smaller tool, a U, smaller U tool. And follow the edge of that. Made that a bit fat, so I'll shave a bit off. Sometimes you draw something really simple like this little fish without thinking and it just has a lot of character even though it's just a simple shape. 
then other times you do a, or I do a, spend hours trying to draw something that has no character at all. So again I'm carving in the same direction I was down here as much as I can. When I get close to the edge I have to change direction a little bit. Um, and I, got, I want to carve around this circle here before I clear this bit. Now I think I'm going to make this I'm going to make it solid. Don't know whether to have a highlight on it or not. Always around that one. With the small U. It's not a very smooth circle, so I'm going to go smooth it off a little bit. Usually things do look okay when you print them, even if they look a bit rough and ready when you're carving. They usually look better printed. It doesn't fix everything, but... Um, Always adds something to a design. Having printed it, it adds texture, and the carved mark always adds adds something to it. I find. Right. So, because I used a little tool there, I've got some little extra lines. I want that bit tidy. So I'm going back and clear those out. And then the teeth. Right. I'm going to switch to the large V, which I haven't used yet. So this is one of my favourite tools, I don't know if you can see that. Um, it's roughly a right angle. You get different shapes of V. Um, this one just comes in a cheap set and um, it's brilliant, I love it. It doesn't stay sharp forever but um, it cuts really nicely. And any time you want to cut away a, a V shape, you can do it in one go with this tool. Just got to find the right angle to do it. And the teeth, the inside of the teeth, I'm going to do in the same way. Coming in from the tip, going down, and then bring the tool back a little bit and bend it over, and you get a little triangle. I don't know if you can see that. Tiny little triangle. You don't want to pull the tool straight up because it will it doesn't break in a nice straight line. Just bring it back a millimeter and then fold it over. Now again I'm going to doing the inside of these similar to here. I'm doing the inside of these first and then I'll go around the outside so I can control the thickness of that line. Let's use the Medium U again. Carving out from the bit. The lips, because if I carve towards the lips and go too far, I'm going to dent. That's very satisfying. Right. Just do that inside a bit. Get the large. Yeah. Take that out. Once I get in the swing, I do switch tools a lot. Um, so I have my li my little U is marked with a line. Not so I can distinguish it from this one, but I have a little V, which looks very similar. So that's why I have that little line on there. Something 
have the Mick Jagger in this fish, I think. Let's swing around that one. You do want to take breaks as you're carving. It's very easy to um, lose track of time and you find you can get tired and make mistakes and also you do want to rest your arm as you're carving. I can feel my shoulders tensing up so I do try and keep my shoulder relaxed. This surface is a little bit higher than I would usually carve at so it's making that's probably contributing now this little highlight here on the lip goes from thin to thick so I'm going to carve that with two different tools I'm going to use the V starting in the thin end and getting thicker but because I want a rounded end at the other end I'm going to use the little you just to take out that end there and if I've done it right the two will meet so you've got a nice pointy end here and a rounded end here and we we'll do the same here this is a bigger example so instead of the small U I'm going to use the large U Take off that in there. And that's not quite meeting at the top, so I'll just tidy that up. Now down here, uh, I'm going to do the same technique that I did here with the V. So I'm starting in the narrow bit and I'm working out. And this is a very gradually wide, gradual widening of the line so I'm using the tool at a more shallow angle and you've got to you're controlling both the width of the line changing and you've got to get that in a nice smooth curve which is why I'm doing it without talking to concentrate and as you come down the two lines get wider they meet here and that in between bit naturally tapers off into nothing um, this is a sort of engraving technique if you look at a banknote or something like that you'll see a similar thing going on and we're just going to have a little line there so I'm not I'm ignoring that blue line. In fact, I'll just colour that in so you can see how, more how it's going to look. So this is a really nice sort of traditional way to do shading. You want to follow the form really um, or at least consider what, like I say, what direction you are carving in. Now this bit here, this is quite a thick black line and then I want to continue that so I'm going to fill that in and then I'm just going to start here and go around to the tail. Okay, let's do this little in here and back to the large V to do these bits I might simplify this a little bit Just take it. I'm going to take this out in one go so to finish that you bring your wrist right down on the tool Pops out. I'm going to make these two lines into one, I think. Because it's a little bit fussy down there. So, there's my pen. Just colour that in so you can see. 
sometimes just smudge the wet ink because that spreads it right to the edges of the raised sections and you can see you end up with a very dirty finger but you can see exactly where those bits start and finish a little bit there which hasn't been removed I'm going to leave that in just because I like it I might take it out later right let's follow this one I'm going to slim that down a little bit Slim it down even more. So I'm using my thumb here to lean into it. Right, we're getting there. Let's clean that a bit. When you get to this sort of stage, um, there's lots of little decisions and adjustments that you can make still um, gonna add in a little line there okay, I'm using this finger here from my other hand just to help to control that direction of the tool a little bit there. This top uh, outline is a bit thin so I'm going to thicken that up. I'm going to do that with the pen. And when I do an outline sometimes I want a very even width of line. Sometimes I want something a bit more varied um, just gives it a little bit more life if it's got a slight variation so I don't know if you can see that it's slightly thinner here and because that's maybe where the lights hitting it because we've got the shadows here doesn't matter to me that that's slightly thinner. So I'm going to leave that thinner and this bit and this bit thicker. Maybe even th thicken this bit out a little bit. Oops. Right. So I'm going to follow that edge. Um, I'm going to use the small tool because some of these blobs are quite close to the edge and I don't want to cut into them so and use the small U to do this bit anyway. Move the thinner bit. Haven't done that very well. Switch to the medium U. Make that a bit thinner. And again down here a bit closer so I'll switch back to the narrow tool every tool feels different it carves a slightly different angle has a different amount of resistance so um, you're switching tools you, have, you sort of have to get used to that as you're going along Okay, let's do this tail. So again, very similar to what I did here, but um, a little bit smaller. Starting at the tip, coming around. And often when I do this, I've got parallel lines. I've drawn them in, but I'm just following that direction. But often they end up in a different place when I'm carving them. And I try and keep keep them even. There's a sort of there's a sort of rhythm you get into it. Okay, and in the middle here I've 
deliberately left that a little bit thicker. Let's see how close we can go with until it goes out of focus. Need to set up my lighting a bit better. Right. So we're not far off there. Um, I'm gonna. I think I've decided I'm gonna keep these uh, as they are. So I'm gonna go around the rest of these shapes. Um, top speed. So I did that super fast. I don't know if you can see there's quite a lot of in between bits that I've left. Quite like these random shapes that you get. So I'm going to leave them in and when I print it I can always take some or all of those out. Um, this the bit here and then I just need to go around these probably the hardest bit apart from the eyes so I'm just going to do that quickly now and then I think we're just about there I always say to my students that if I ever carve a perfect circle I'll retire it hasn't happened yet these, I don't want these perfect circles anyway, I want them a bit blobby and uneven um, and as they're going up to the top um, they flatten out because of perspective so let's do these and then Nearly there. Let's just do this bit. I do find I speed up as I'm carving. Let's put a highlight on that one. Um, as I get warmed up, I just it just you just gets easier. There's a couple of occasions where I found I sort of get into a zone and. Like a trained athlete, I feel like I can't can't go wrong. But it's only happened a couple of times. Fifteen years, so you know. Right. Mm -hmm. I think I'm gonna leave that there. Um gonna be printing this at home with a wooden spoon, so um, check out part three for that and um, I'll be posting more videos soon. Thanks a lot. Bye.